Okay, so tonight's basically a full dress rehearsal for Sound Waves, is that right? Yeah, essentially. We, we planned it as a, you know, we're doing like a production run through today, doing all the set. Um, and then we just figured, why not? You want to wait for them to show up? <laughs> nah, just keep going. <laughs> um, yeah, we just figured that um, it'd be cool to do something a little bit cooler, you know? So we, we've got a bunch of charities that we work pretty closely with yep. and organisations and Sea Shepherd we're pretty passionate about um, and we've met a bunch of those guys before and definitely back what they're doing so we figured make it a cheap show have people donate some money to charity and yeah I guess a lot of the songs um, when we recorded them we were doing a lot of writing so in the studio and getting together at that point so a lot of them we hadn't really even played together apart from in the studio before so it was a good opportunity for that and then to do something uh, yeah we thought it was good at the same time so you mentioned Sea Shepherd so what sort of relationship does the band have with them um, well, we found out they have uh, sort of like a, I guess, a music contact within Sea Shepherd, and they they work with bands like ourselves who are passionate about their cause and vice versa to just cross promote each other. Um, and as a band, we're four vegans and one vegetarian, so we're pretty into um, animal welfare on the personal side of things. Um, we've only got one song about it on the new record, so we, you know we're not. I wouldn't say we're a vegan band or whatever, trying to push that aspect, but personally, it's something we're all passionate about. So um, we've, I don't know, we've we've been privy to what Sea Shepherd's doing for the last few years and had them out in shows before, right? Yeah, they've, we had them out on our last tour in December, just setting up. Uh, sorry, in June last year, setting up little tables and just giving them an opportunity to get their info out to our fans. Um, yeah. Cool. And so that song's Nightmares, isn't it? That's right, yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about that song, just in general, sort of how the writing came about? And yep, the, the music for the song itself was written by myself um, when we were doing some writing just in a home studio. We set up out in Geelong at one of the other guys' house, at Jamie's house. Um, and it was just kind of song that the idea came about and we, I wrote it in about a day um, with some input from the other guys. And then lyrically, um, we knew we wanted to write a song that sort of dealt with animal rights and animal welfare and animal cruelty. Um, so Jamie, I think he wrote the lyrics to that song in the studio once we got to Sweden. Um, he'd actually watched a video on YouTube. It was pretty brutal. It was, uh, it was like thousands of pigs in Korea that were diseased and couldn't be used, killed for their meat. So they were just dumped into a pit on top of each other basically, like thousands of pigs being buried alive under the weight of each other. And that's actually the sample that you hear in the track Billions that's on the the deluxe version of the CD. So yeah, he watched that video. I think it's one of the first songs to write lyrics for. Yeah, that, wasn't it? that's yeah. right. Watched that video, got that's super right. angry and passionate and came up with the lyrics to Nightmares. So what's your take on the uh, shark cull going on in Western Australia at the moment? Uh, I think, you know, I'm not a, uh, marine biologist, I'm not an expert, but I don't, from what I can tell, I don't think it's, it's run by people who, and propagated as a good idea by people who are marine biologists, I think it's run as a reaction by politicians who think that will be a vote winner because they seem to be doing something rather than something that's proven to be effective, uh, and yeah, I, it seems ridiculous, I think, probably from our point of view to uh, go into a creature's natural habitat and kill it because um, it's done what it naturally does yeah. uh, a couple of times uh, and that's evolved people. Yeah. I saw a, an image that someone made the other day that was going around the internet and it was it actually showed the amount of people being killed by sharks in I think the past 12 months as like little figures of people versus how many sharks have been killed by people and it was like yeah. You know, like six that was people. Even like in an hour, that's how many sharks were killed by people. Yeah, it was like six little human figures and then yeah. like hundreds. Yeah. I think a lot of the time, even like survivors, you often see them say, you know, I don't want sharks, the shark to be hunted down and killed. And I, you know, often they're, you know, surfers or at some you know, degree they feel, you know, at one with nature because that's why they're out there amongst it. And they, they understand that. I think it's just more of a, you know, uh, overblown hype um, of sort of general population. Yeah. Um, Bands have been known to boycott states and even countries due to like you know political laws that come in and bills that are passed. Um, they gave My Chemical Romance back in 2011 boycotted Arizona. Um, is that something you reckon bands will ever look at in regards to this WA thing that's going on at the moment, or do you reckon that would be taking it too far? I personally don't think boycotting an area is 
a good way to get um, something positive happening in the area, you know what I mean? Like this, like this genre of music, usually an underground style of music, it popularizes the ideas within it and by avoiding a place, you're just really minimizing your, your power to speak out to those people and get um, just a positive example of uh, an alternative put forward. Um, so yeah, I don't really think that's the best way to go about it. I can see what some people do and see why some people might do that, stuff like the Olympics, etc. But um, we're more about boycotting the actual problem than the area that the problem is occurring in. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Um, I suppose whenever the band name comes up, especially your name, Jonah, vegan, vegetarianism far behind it, do you think that we'll ever get to the point where it's not sort of made such a big deal out of and it'll just be an accepted lifestyle? I think it already kind of is. It's just that a lot of people are still learning what the vegan or vegetarian lifestyle is, you know? Like, you speak to people maybe from the country or even in the cities and they've just... some. A lot of people don't know what it is. They were raised differently and why Why should they know what it is? But nowadays, more than ever, it's it's a, it's a popular lifestyle choice. Um, that That's proven by... You know how many products you see on the shelves in supermarkets these days versus 10 years ago. Um, I guess it's our hope that you know more and more people will adapt to that lifestyle because we see it as nothing but a positive thing. You know, it's it's good for your health, it's good for the animals, and it's good for the environment. So what's it's, it's definitely massively changed, I think, hasn't it? Yeah, apart from it, you know, it's become much easier because there's so many places that will stock stuff. If everyone sort of knows, you know, people will often even just live low key vegan lifestyles but they'll happen to be you know in movies or you know in bands or playing sport or you know stuff like that and it just sort of sets a positive example of, you know people are thinking they just think oh yeah I could I could be that too. So do you have any advice for anyone that would take up a vegan lifestyle or is looking to sort of you know read up about it or sort of? Yeah I mean that's how I guess we got into it. I first got into it going to hardcore shows when I was a teenager and met guys like Ben and uh, some other friends of ours at these shows and I learned what veganism was and ended up doing my own research behind it. I think I think it's a daunting thing for a lot of people to make such a big transition in their life, which is completely understandable, but I feel that once I had actually committed to the transition, it wasn't as difficult as I thought it, it would be and with the right motivation behind it, it's, it's really not that hard. Um, so yeah, I, I guess my advice is don't don't feel like it's going to be too big of a, th of a change in your life because, you know, after the maybe three, four month adjustment period, it's really just second nature. Really easy. Yeah, I'd, look, I'd say, you know, research a bit about it, read about it, watch some of the videos about it, um, find out what happens in the industry they don't know that much about, um, so you feel passionate about it and strong about it and, you know, determined with it so you can get over that change and then just make sure you enjoy it, you know, like we always go to places where the food's rad, you know, where the treats are rad and you just, you know, make it a positive thing for you as an enjoyable thing as well, you know, so you're not like watching everyone else eat, you know, stuff that you can't, instead you're eating stuff that's, that's great, you know, it comes to... I think also finding, finding other people who are like-minded really helps, you know, like I had a bunch of friends that were vegan at the time and they were like, they get excited because they get to show you all the stuff you can have now and the treats faster. Yeah, and you can learn things easier. If you're doing it on your own, it can be a bit more difficult, but um, if you, you know, if you look up some vegan networks or find it, you know, other people in the music scene or whatever, that can definitely help as well. Have you ever been part of a festival or like on the road and sort of animal rights or there's been any animal cruelty on stage or have you witnessed any of that? Or? Um, I've read about bands like, you know, Scandinavian black metal bands getting on stage and like killing birds beforehand and stuff like that, which I think is very dumb. <laughs> but um, I don't think we've ever really seen it firsthand. Um, these days, a lot of the festivals are really vegan friendly, especially over in Germany. There's there's one festival we played two years ago called With Full Force in Germany, and they they had a vegan stand out in the crowd for people to get food, and they had like like mock meat kebabs shaved off the rotisserie that was all completely vegan, and you know stuff like that's growing in popularity as well. So it makes it great for us and for the fans. And I suppose even going back to the Sea Shepherd, do you think that your role sort of you know you have that not so much importance but you have you know, a sense of influence over your fan base. Is it important to use that in a positive way to promote these things instead of just being totally you know, apart from Absolutely, it all and yeah. separating like yourself? Sea Shepherd would be one of the organisations that have the most sort of active and uh, 
you know, more, you know, we obviously talk about to some extent what we are into, and lots of organisations might do that. But Sea Shepherd are out there actually doing stuff that they believe in making a difference out there where it counts. You know, and there's not too many organisations that get to do that and are able to do that. So yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It, I definitely like to use our influence over young people and fans in a good way. You know, there's plenty of bands out there singing about partying and drinking and drugs and all that kind of stuff, which is all well and good and that can be fun too, but um, you're, you're conveying that message directly to young impressionable people and, you know, I guess I feel like that time can be better spent sharing something positive with those people that's going to have a, a good impact on them rather than turn them to drugs or alcohol or whatever it is. I suppose that would touch on, I've read your blog during the week that you wrote about, you know, these bands having these platforms and what they actually convey to their fans and lyrics and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, do you think there's too many bands that just aren't thinking about the bigger picture and sort of, you know, not trying to convey, you know, positive messages or a message is actually going to make a difference? I think there's a balance, you know, because you, obviously when you're a musician, you write music for yourself as well as for other people. And, um, pe you know, people write lyrics for themselves about their own personal experience and that's why a lot of these angry negative lyrics are out there and that's fair enough, but I feel like there's a balance. You also have to understand that... What, what your fans are going to take away from reading those lyrics and how they're going to interpret them. Um, so I, I like to think that we you know, consider that as well in what we write and what we convey as a band publicly to our fan base. Awesome. Well, thanks for speaking to AMH TV today, guys. Yeah, cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you.